What would you say has been one of the biggest challenges that dementia's brought to your door? We'll use that terminology you've, you, 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 you've just used, brought to the door. Mm -hmm. That door of mine, when I first got diagnosed, the first thing that came into my mind was isolation. I didn't go across the threshold for three weeks. And the point was, if if Wendy hadn't arrived, yes, it is Wendy, hadn't arrived, I would have still been sitting here vegetating all the time. Mm -hmm. It's a, I keep saying it to you, it's the professionals that really help you. They actually give you the impetus to do things. We went down to... Uh, the centre here in Dundee and that didn't help me at all because they were playing putting in, in the hall and they'd, um, they, were, they had snooker and things like that and that wasn't for me at all. Mm -hmm. Then Wendy, I think, took me up to Scottish Dementia Working Group or introduced me to that mm -hmm. and that was where I should have been. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's where I am at the present moment. Right. So that's how it's affected that's how I've got on with life. Do you think people look at you differently now that you've got your diagnosis and you've been very open about talking about living with dementia? Do people see you differently? Yes, when I when people know I've got dementia or they they they're, they're talking to me, I don't let them get in first. Defense is the best is the is the best form of attack. Mm -hmm. So I tell them in the nicest way possible that I have dementia and I may stammer and I may get my words mixed up and I may do this and I may do that. And that works a tremendous amount. That mm -hmm. really helps. And that, uh, that avoids this stigma, this barrier come up. Oh, he's not stupid after all. Right. He can actually talk. So this is, the, 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 this is what come, come, uh, comes of that. And as for mixing my words up, we're going right off script here, but as for mixing my, my, my words up, uh, I go for uh, Ernie Wise and when we're talking to Andre Previn and we're doing that famous sketch about playing the piano. Uh -huh. And he got down, I think it was one of them went down, and he played everything under, under the sun. And they went all over the place. And he went up to Andre Previn and he grabbed them. He says, now I've got to get this right. All the notes are the right notes are there, but I'm not necessarily playing them in the right <laughs> order, uh -huh. and that's the analogy that I draw to that. Mm -hmm. And I've used that quite a few times actually, and it works. As a humour, works a mm -hmm. tremendous amount, rather than 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 any, than anything else. Right. When I get up in the morning, I open my eyes. The first thing I say to myself, "What day is it?" Well, I burned the toast this morning. Mm -hmm. Well, I burn my porridge. And this is what you've got to do when, when, you, when you've got dementia. And you look at all your notes, mm -hmm. all your stickers, st sticker notes. What am I doing today? Remember to take your keys. Remember to take some money for a taxi. Mm -hmm. All the things that everybody else mm -hmm. takes for granted because that's the way you normally live. We can't. We just have to sit down, think about things, and even when we do that, Heather, it doesn't always come to you. Mm -hmm. 